Uh, good evening, uh, afternoon, and morning to everyone. Uh, just let me know if you can hear me uh, clearly. Just type one if you can hear me well. Uh, so as usual, I, I'm a little early, about 10 minutes earlier, early th than... Yeah, seems good. So we've got, uh, let's see, we've got quite a few of you already here or, uh, so, yeah, we've got, yeah, only about 60 people so far. I, I did try to warn people that I'd be earlier today, eight o'clock instead of nine, uh, because I, I got to get up very early tomorrow, uh, traveling to Switzerland. Uh, Rick, Rick Wa, we've got loads of ones here. <laughs> Uh, Alain Roy is here, Rusty Benthammer, MW35, Dave L, Timothy Sullivan, Urban Sombrero, T4 Parts, Tom Jode, George Stone. Great, great, great to see you all here. And uh, we will uh, talk about the main topic. Well, the title of the live stream is about um, let me have a look here again. Uh, rule of law and property uh, rights uh, at risk in the West. And I think it's very, very important uh, subject. And of course, we're going to touch up on that as uh, more and more people arrive, give people a bit of time. Hey, Graham Hobbs, nice to see you here. Maneco 64 community. That, that's right. Graham Hobbs, is, he's been uh, following this and being part of the community for many years. And he's the one who, who came up with that term. It's a community. Uh, Alain Roy, bonjour de Montréal, au Canada, Montréal in French. Uh, hi, Lynn Burns. Uh, Gavster Legrand, hi, Gavster. Uh, Steve Foster from Louisiana. John Norris from Alaska. That's the great thing. We, we've got people from all over the place. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, your nationality or whatever. We're just uh, talking. It doesn't matter who your uh, supposed leaders are. We, we just talk. Uh, David Bradley uh, says, good evening, Mario and Billy. Great. <laughs> good evening, David. Smart Alec as well. Hi, Smart Alec. MM126. IL Prepper. Jeff Logue. Neku Sorin from Romania, Carlos Garcia, hi Carlos, Grow Mechanic, he's selling his nickels, <laughs> all right, Henrik Schoblom, how do you think SEK will be impacted going forward? Uh, you know, all fiat currencies uh, will uh, suffer, will lose purchasing power uh, against real things, so None of them are exempt because they 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 all all fiat currencies have kind of uh, central banks and governments have followed the U.S. monetary and fiscal policy to some extent. So unfortunately, they not even the Swedish krona is exempt. Not even the Swiss franc, <laughs> where I'm going tomorrow, is exempt. Tricky Dicky, thank you for your super chat. Amazing how we can break our own laws. Uh, to sanction. That's right. <laughs> it's just crazy. <clears throat> Sip water. Uh, Silver Tass says, hit the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, that, that helps, I guess. Uh, Carlos Garcia in New Jersey, USSA. <laughs> Grow Mechanic Maneconomics. Yeah, I, I forgot who came up with that term, uh, Maneconomics. It could have been... Uh, it could have been Lord Humongous, but uh, and I've designed a few uh, mugs and T-shirts from an economics, and they're actually selling a little bit lately, I noticed. Uh, Tricky Dicky, thank you for your super chat. Chancellor telling people not to invest in Russia seems anti-market forces to me. Well, and the thing is, I, I think the big banks, uh, they're investing while we can't because I try to buy a, a UK domiciled company that has gold mines in Russia, and they only allow you to close your position. But 
you know, if someone is uh, buying a short position, covering a short position, or selling their long position, someone's buying. So I, I would say JP, the JP Morgans, the Barclays, and the Goldmans of the world, they're buying, and but we're not allowed to do it. So I, I think, uh, unfortunately, that's the way it's going. Uh, jump to, uh, are you watching the TPC, the Players' Championship? That's golf. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I love golf, and uh, I, I used to watch a lot more golf. But no, I, I haven't watched uh, the players. Uh, I know they have a rain delay. They're probably going to finish on Monday. But uh, I will be watching the Masters uh, in the beginning of April. That's one of the only ones I watch. So there you go. Uh, videos of my golf swing. No, I, have some, I haven't really videoed my golf swing of late, but I got some photos when I was younger. But uh, I might put it on one of the videos. So you can have a look at it. Uh, Belly Dance for Arabia, Julie Newhouse. Oh, so that's that's your name, uh, Belly Dance in Miami. Great. Swan Silver. I had some Russian silver spoons on my market stall today. It would have been easier to sell a bomb. It's really silly, all these things. Uh, I can't believe people are so jingoistic can you imagine if i was like of russian descent if my name was nikolai romanov or something like that uh, people would stop watching me just because of that it, it's ridiculous uh, bp russia has a debt payment due on march 16th do you think they will intentionally default on their bond payment and if so what would this do to the markets well i'm not i haven't read about that i i know that they're they want to pay dollar debts with rubles that that's a default well it could impact uh investors it could impact the financial system we have seen that lately the libor rates uh L london interbank offered rate rates which are, which are the uh rates that at which uh international banks lend to each other unsecured in london have been going up so they are, they, yeah, it, it could be, it could make the uh, banking system even more fragile. But I don't know how much. Um, if it's a big debt, that repayment. If it's small, it probably won't matter. Wan John, greeting. Wan John, greetings from New Mexico. Hi, Wan John. Are you bullish on XRP or other altcoins? Uh, Jado five seven zero five. No, I don't really fall. I have had XRP, but um, I mean, the only altcoins I have are really Hive right now because I, I get quite a bit of Hive when I post my videos on Hive. So that's the only one I follow. Hive has done quite well, even though recently it's come off. It went from 80 cents most of last year all the way up to three. And now it's trading around uh, 90 cents. But that's the only one I watch, really. Benoit Guillou, imagine that bankers can buy Russian shares, but can't. Yeah, I know. It's Yeah, you know, the, the USA uh, defaulted in 1971. And uh, when they closed the gold window, because... Back then, uh, if you had 35 uh, US dollars, you could redeem it you know, as a country, as a, a sovereign country, you could redeem it for an ounce of gold. They stopped that. So you could argue that uh, if you do a snapshot of uh, gold holdings, uh, of dollar holdings on August 5th, 14th or August 13th, which was a Friday in 1971, the US still owes all that gold, technically, to all sovereign nations at $35 an ounce, not at uh, around 2000 So there you go. Uh, piss, <laughs> piss Off says China and Russia have 6,000 tons of gold. I think they have a lot more. Officially, they have 6,000, but uh, some people speculate they could have more than 20,000 together. 
Gianfranco Bergania, USA, it's centuries that is stealing money around the world. Uh, I don't think it's the USA per se, not Americans, but um, the government. And the same thing with uh, the UK. So we're coming up for eight o'clock. The reason I'm starting earlier today is because I got to leave home around, uh, let's see, yeah, around 4.30 in the morning. So I'm going to get a little more sleep tonight. Uh, one eye, Darch says, greetings, Mario. The wife and I love your content and in integrity. Keep up the great work. Thank you. Thank you for uh, following. Uh, Michael White, do you think they will confiscate gold? Uh, personally, uh, I'm in the UK, but it, this applies to the US as well. I think the confiscation has been done <laughs> let's say in the last year and a half, almost two years. And wh what do I mean by that? Well, by, by frustrating people who had gold so much by controlling the price that they've given up or they haven't bought. So I, I don't think they will confiscate. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, but uh, what, what other choice have you got? Uh, I would say if you keep all your money in the bank, Look what happened in Canada. They can freeze your, your account. So at least even if they are going to confiscate, for now they're not. So I think it's the safest thing to have. Silver Tass says, enjoy your trip to Switzerland. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. See my, my sisters, my mom, my brother-in-law. And uh, yeah, it's a nice place. Uh, and uh, looks like the weather is going to be pretty nice as well. It's still cold there, but... Uh, I think it's going to be sunny. Hi, Cupid Stunt from Warrington. Nice to see you. Ken Close says, hi, Mario. I enjoyed the show. So uh, where's Rafi? Hi, Gianfranco. Rafi, uh, he doesn't come on every Sunday. He comes once every month. Uh, yeah, he joins me once every month. So, um, yeah, he's... Uh, He's at home right now, I guess, <laughs> in Israel. Uh, what would the price of gold be with a gold-backed money? Well, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think the market would find a, a, a ratio for gold versus real things. That's how it would happen. Right now, the system is so screwed up. There's so much debt and fiat that it's difficult to say. It's all about relative value. So let's start now because uh, it's just gone past eight. So we've got 500 people here. That's not bad, not great. Uh, but it, it says uh, the title then, Rule of Law and Property Rights uh, at Risk in the West. And before I look at some uh, articles and some stories, uh, we, we need to go back, I think, uh, historically. And again, I'm going to use uh, reference uh, Ram Emanuel, <laughs> who, who was in the Obama administration. And he said, never let a good crisis go to waste. And I think the uh, internationalists, the bankers, the globalists, they've been, um, well, they've been very powerful for, for centuries. And they use uh, wars and, and crisis to do things that, would never normally not be done in a relatively free uh, society like the West has been, where property rights are respected, where the freedom of the, the individual is respected. So it's been a gradual uh, dilution of freedom, uh, gradual dilution of the, uh, the currencies and the money. And uh, I think we need to go even as far back as the Napoleonic Wars, because they suspended the uh, convertibility of uh, banknotes in the UK for almost uh, 20 years or so, I think 1897 to 1816. Um, so that was the first step, get people used to uh, fiat currency or fiat money. And, and then we had World War I as well, where most of Europe had went off gold and uh, did not convert, uh, took off their currencies off off gold, no convertibility. Most of them try to go back, but then by the early 30s, it was all finished. And the US, of course, domestically, it was 1933. 
and then worldwide 1971. And every time uh, our currencies uh, that we uh, are, use, uh, they become less and less valuable and we have less and less privacy as well. And now in the electronic age, it's getting really, really bad with digital currency, all the talk of digital currency. And already we use all, uh, quite a bit of uh, you know, online banking. Uh, we're hearing that uh, banks are closing ATMs. So even though the cash nowadays is like a, <laughs> a promise to pay nothing, it still gives you privacy, paper cash. So one of the articles I wanted to uh, show you, and uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of this, but we we need to cover this is, uh, you know, Canada, how they froze hundreds of accounts tied to protests. You know, they did end the freezing, but it shows that, you know, if Canada can do it, uh, all the other Western countries can do it because Canada is part of the uh, Western, uh, Western uh, society, right? And uh, I think it's really worrying what, what that they can just, uh, and this is like uh, property rights, really, because what they're saying here, if they don't like the way you're thinking, if you go against the grain of a government policy, they can basically shut you off. So it's not just Russian oligarchs, and we're going to come to that in a minute. Uh, I think we are all at risk, and that's why it's so important more than ever. I think to have to try to have a little bit or as much as you can depends on your uh, circumstance, some gold and silver outside the system. Yes, we still need fiat currency in the bank to, to function. So I'll stop at that now and look at some of the uh, questions or some of your comments. And uh, I'm sorry if I missed some of the questions. It's difficult to keep up. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of you um, here. Matt Bittner, how much longer do you think we will have to wait to see forced selling of assets? I think we're already seeing, Matt. <laughs> we're, we're seeing, um, you know, I looked at this uh, gold mining company that's UK domiciled, but has gold mines in Russia. And uh, just the fact that uh, they said you can't open new positions on that, uh, the company, the share price just dumped. And I'm sure a lot of UK investors are getting, you know, liquidating. So I think it's already starting. Uh, they're using the, the uh, geopolitical crisis as a cover. And I think it's what, what we call a head fake right now. It's the, these are dangerous times, I think, for people's financial assets, because uh, they're pointing towards Ukraine, towards the oligarchs. And at the same time, we're forgetting that they're coming after our assets, not just uh, through freezing our accounts, but through inflating the system and basically destroying the purchasing power of our, of our money, or not real money, but of our currency. Shane O'Donnell, hi, Mary. According to Martin Armstrong, the 12th of March, uh, also heard the 22nd, well, 12th of March is, was yesterday, uh, are the major key dates. Have you heard this? And if so, could, could you shine some uh, light on it, please? Yeah, you know, I started following Martin Armstrong back in like 06 or 07. He was still in uh, prison or in jail, and he used to write uh, from jail. And he does have these uh, turning points or key dates. And maybe yesterday was a key date for his the cycle work uh, that he does. Uh, March 22nd, I think that's to do with the uh, Skull and Bones uh, Secret Society from Yale. Their, their, their special number is 322. So March 22nd is 322. I think that's why people, people speculate on those things. But uh, yeah, as for Martin Armstrong, I don't know. It could have been some kind of turn date for some kind of cycle. Uh, short, long, or midterm. I don't really follow Martin Armstrong that much. <sighs> A 
low blood pressure. Mario, what is the reason for total monetary shutdown of Russia? Gold back ruble. Well, the reason they give us, the general public, is that Russia has been a bad, <laughs> bad boy, so to speak, and we got to punish them. But it, it could be uh, to do with bringing back or bringing out not just a gold ruble, but uh, you want back currency, who knows? Uh, I tend to think that uh, a lot of what the public are told by the the powers that be, by the mainstream media, is just for our consumption, is for us to kind of uh, manage the perception that we have. And uh, who knows what they're negotiating behind the scenes. So you could be right. Ides of March, yeah, March 15th. And March 16th is uh, my sister's birthday. So there you go. <laughs> uh, Steve Ross Holmes, thank you for your super chat. Uh, you use Glint. Have you looked at Kinesis or compared Glint to any other gold, silver, brother the vaults? Uh, I haven't looked at Kinesis and I'm not interested in Kinesis. I've, I do have a gold money account but I, I don't use it. I, I used it in the past and it's a much not as user-friendly as Glint. The only reason I'm not interested in Kinesis is that they, uh, they're not just a, they're not a pure uh, gold depository like Glint. They provide like some kind of uh, inducement and uh, I'm not really into that. I, I, I think, uh, I, yeah, that's, that, that's the way I see it. And I haven't looked at other ones. Uh, I'm happy with Glint, but yeah, there could be other ones out there that are interesting. Uh, Glint uh, is very user-friendly, the app. And uh, what I remember from gold money is that if you wanted to spend your gold, you couldn't really technically, even though through Glint, technically uh, when you uh, spend the gold, they do the uh, FX transaction right there, like in nanoseconds. But with gold money, you have to uh, liquidate your gold into the fiat currency and then lock your, load your card. Um, so that's the difference. Kinesis, yeah, uh, not really interested in Kinesis. You know, you have to make a choice. If you're interested, that's fine. Joker Alpha, have you heard of the possibility of Russia selling a thousand barrels of oil for an ounce of gold? Yeah, I mean, that that's not really a, a possibility. And that's just the one guy, Luke Groman, who are, he's a quite clever guy. He just speculated that Russia might give up a uh, thousand barrels for an ounce of gold, which is uh, really cheap. I wouldn't be giving out my oil a uh, thousand barrels for an ounce of gold. I, I think right now uh, you only get about 16 barrels of oil for an ounce of gold. And uh, I don't really, you know, I don't really think Russia cares much about the price, dollar price of gold. So uh, yeah, and I saw that George Gammon did a video on that. It wasn't really his idea who was looking at Luke Roman's idea. I, I think it's just being too clever. Uh, I think is a bit simpler than that. Uh, I don't think, why would Russia want to give out all their oil for so little gold. If they've got gold as well, they're like the second or thirdest gold producer in the world. Why would they want to do that? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think uh, just uh, backing their currency with gold would be like a, a nuclear missile into the dollar, especially if the Chinese follow along. Yeah, and then they're talking about $100,000 gold. I, I mean, I, I try not to get into those big numbers. And uh, yeah, just focus on the relative value of gold. And I think that will do well. Silver Sonic, thank you for your super chat. Celtic Knot says Glint worked very well for me. Uh, FT of, of the X says... I have gold money, not very impressed. Yeah, I have gold money, but I haven't used it in years. I didn't like it was really uh, cumbersome to uh, load your card. Anyway.
someone know um someone comment on the bioweapons <laughs> yeah uh that story is a bit is quite quite something they're trying to turn it around and say that the russians are are, are the danger <laughs> i won't go too much into that um the thing about um gold and the ruble hi ben gray nice to see you uh, I think the the thing is that the reason the dollar is the major reserve currency uh, is because America had two thirds of all the gold, uh, not all the gold reserves uh, after World War II. So <laughs> not surprisingly, the dollar became the dominant currency and it was as good as gold. So now the US dollar is like not really worth the paper it's printed on. So if countries want to use their own currency, be it Russia, India, China, Brazil, any country, they have to have gold reserves and good, you know, a good amount of gold reserves to back those currencies because the dollar is going to be still around, but uh, it's not going to, people have lost faith and confidence in it. And the only way to have faith and confidence in national currencies is to have a uh, a gold backing. It doesn't mean that they're going to use gold coins, even though that would be nice. Property rights. Yeah, let's go. Uh, I've gotten off subject. So we looked at uh, uh, the Canadian uh, truckers accounts being frozen. Uh, what worries me here, for example, is that in the UK, uh, we've had this oligarch or this Russian businessman who bought uh, one of the major football clubs. And by football, I mean soccer. In the UK, we call it football. Uh, back in 2003, Chelsea Football Club. So, I mean, look at this. Chelsea's bank account frozen by Barclays as Abramovich sanctions leave club in turmoil. This is like, uh, let's say, uh, uh, the Dallas Cowboys, if they had a Russian owner, and uh, Bank of America freezing all their accounts. Uh, I think it's a, a real bad precedent. And I think they're using this crisis uh, in Russia. They're using also the crisis we had, the COVID crisis, to do things they never, never would. And uh, there's that old uh, story about the German pastor during World War II or in the 30s. He said, you know, they came after the, the Jews, and I said nothing. They came after the gypsies, I said nothing. They came after uh, my political opponents, I said nothing. And then they came after me. And, and uh, I'll show you another story here that is worrying. The UK government is actually thinking uh, of, right now they can't do it because it, it's against uh, common law, the law of the land in the UK. <laughs> and yes, it, it, legally it would be impossible. So it says UK I seizing the property of oligarchs hit with sanctions. Ministers discuss plan to take residences of business tycoons without paying compensation. So yes, uh, we might say, oh, they're Russian oligarchs, they're uh, Putin puppets. But one of these oligarchs, though, he he's a guy called Oleg Deripaska. Years ago, he had to come to, he went out of Russia because he was being uh, chased, right, by, by Putin. And now he's been chased by our governments. So, and if they can do it, if they can change, you know, they ch can change the law to do that, uh, they can do it to, to anyone, believe me. UK cabinet minister, uh, Gove is drawing up plans to seize British property owned by Russian oligarchs with links to Putin without paying them compensation. Um, so you see, it says here, the proposals are likely to, re likely to require legislation and government lawyers have concerns the plans would be subject to legal challenges because they would undermine UK property rights. No final government decision has been reached or whether to proceed. So yes, it's not, they haven't done it yet, but just the fact that they are thinking of doing, doing it, I, I think is very serious and it affects all of us.
hundred thousand dollar gold destroys the U.S. dollar. Well, <laughs> I guess it's like the uh, chicken and egg. Which one comes first? Well, a hundred thousand dollar gold just says that the dollar is worthless. It doesn't destroy the dollar. But yeah, I agree with you. So what can we do uh, to uh, protect ourselves? Well, it's very hard, but we need to be aware of these uh, things and we can't let them. Yeah, we, we need to really push back because uh, they, they even like, for example, the income tax uh, apparently is not in the books. Uh, it was created back in the Napoleonic Wars. And first it was there just to tax the very wealthy, but now everyone pays an income tax. So, you know, they're go going after the oligarchs, but very soon they could go after everyone. BP, Mario, you mentioned before that silver will eventually eventuate to 600 from your chart analysis. If and when it goes there, Get, given the current situation, why would it stop from there? Oh, that's that's true. That's true. Uh, some people see it a lot higher, but uh, you know, <laughs> one step at a time. You could go to six hundred and then correct to three hundred and then go further. Who knows? Larson chat. Uh, how bad do you think it will get? Grow Network says people will starve. Disease will be rampant, civil unrest. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a possibility. We haven't even seen yet the consequence of, of uh, a lot of the shortages, not only in grains, you know, agricultural commodities, but things like uh, fertilizers that we depend a lot on Russia and other countries like that for um yeah i think the next 12 to 18 months won't be pretty and uh here in the uk uh next month we're going to see a lot of price increases for utilities w already looking at the uh, the prices uh, of petrol which uh, is what we call gasoline in the uk that's gone from below uh one pound 20 per liter uh, like for diesel, and it's now like 170 or more. I mean, that's a big increase. Uh, low blood pressure says people starving now in Sudan. Yeah, and I think the uh, poorer countries are going to suffer even more. Because it's just like uh, in rich countries, like uh, suppose, well, rich countries like in the UK, uh, the people on lower income, they, they get hit harder from inflation and they, they struggle more to buy food. And it's the same thing if you extrapolate to a, a country that's poorer in general. Yeah. And we saw, I think, 2011 when we uh, food prices and uh, crop prices went up, we saw the Arab Spring. So yeah, things could get really, really uh, unstable. Larson chat, thank you for your super chat. <laughs> uh, echo, echo, uh, aren't they already freezing West assets that Russia acquired by selling? Yeah, I agree with you. It, it, nothing, everything is upside down. I'm not saying what's happening uh, uh, in Ukraine is right, but uh, it's just, uh, you know. Uh, low blood pressure says, Mario, you might get stuck in Switzerland during the global cyber pandemic. Well, you know, I can't, you can't think like that. <laughs> You, you got to keep living. Who knows what's going to happen? I'm going to be there for a week. I'm not concerned. And if it does happen, it won't be, uh, it won't, you know, it, it won't be for long. Joker Alpha, Mario, the two horsemen of the apocalypse, road, pestilence, war, famine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm aware of that. 
Graham Hobbs, I've heard from two of my sources that gas fuel prices will drop uh, end of May and July. Well, you know, markets go up and down, but I think the damage has been done. Uh, let's see, I've got some more stuff here. Oh yeah, this is the other worrying thing, I guess. I think I spoke about this earlier, but uh, you know, and I actually recommend this uh, article. I hadn't seen it. It was written last year uh, by Ewan Stewart, how a state Bitcoin could threaten your personal uh, freedom. Um, it's a very interesting article and it talks about how you know the Bank of England, the Treasury and uh, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, this guy here, Sunak, the fact that they're talking about programming our digital currencies uh, is very serious, uh, again, to our freedoms and uh, private property, because uh, your money should be your property. Uh, but uh, actually, legally, money in the bank is an unsecured loan. But this would uh, be really serious. It says here, uh, but any attempt to make this programmable, even if the authorities generously allowed this digital currency initially to run in tandem with traditional currency would effectively mark a major breach of an individual's or corporate freedom to buy legally what they like. The man from the ministry already demands the state over half the size of the economy, but to then nudge, direct, and dictate how the remainder might be spent goes well beyond the pale. Break the link between currency productivity and production in all its forms and you play with fire breaking the link uh, with personal choice and preference of what to buy and you cease to have a free society the irony is uh, should our political class and their institutions attempt this currency change they will only hasten the collapse and confidence of the very monetary system they so heavily rely on uh, i think that guy is right and i think it's going to fail just like uh, uh, not Charles, but uh, Carl Schwab's Great Reset is failing. I, I think the CBDCs are going to fail. They're going to try to bring it in once their currencies are in trouble, but they're going to fail because it's too centralized. Centralized things always fail. Look at the Soviet Union. <laughs> it, it failed. Uh, centralization and trying to Centralized power in a society is never good. Feed Billy. Free Billy. Alternative view. V Viva Billy. <laughs> Long live Billy. Joker Alpha, rule of all, article one, section 10, clause one, make anything uh, but gold and silver, a tender uh, in payments of debts. Yeah. That's the U.S. Constitution. Yeah, Sarah Brown also thinks the CBDCs will fail uh, spectacularly. I agree. David Bradley, Trump was the guy that exposed all of this corruption. Uh, I actually don't agree with you. <laughs> I, I think it was the, the Tea Party, really, that was exposing things. Uh, Ron Paul. Don't forget Ron Paul. Uh, I trust Ron Paul a lot more than I trust Donald Trump. So I, I, I don't really think it was Trump who exposed that because all the things that Trump came out with, I, I had known already like for 10 years or more because I, I followed like uh, the Mises Institute. I followed Lou Rockwell. I followed Ron Paul. I followed Infowars. It wasn't Don, uh, Donald Trump who exposed it. It was being exposed way before him. So there you go. He jumped on the bandwagon. <laughs> uh, echo, echo. On a brighter note, what do you think of the new Tudor Beast range of bullion? Oh, the, the two ounce silver coins, they, I have some, uh, if that's what you mean. Yeah, I think they're nice. JP Millward, we must make sure 
Putin doesn't get his hands on Billy or it's over for the West. <laughs> yeah, he, he might come after silver, uh, Billy Silver. That, 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 that could be a, a problem. <laughs> Benoit Guillou, uh, any car bought with a CBDC, including a carbon smart contract, could have its property rights revoked once the car emits more. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a really horrible world, uh, Orwellian world. Uh, Professor Michael Hudson, Carlos Garcia. I, I think I have listened to him in the past. Uh, I agree with some of his views, but I think he's more, uh, is he, isn't he, he's more like left leaning. I'm more of a libertarian, I think, but I, I might be wrong. I haven't listened to him for a while. Uh, Bra Brady Gertie thinks Ron Paul has controlled opposition. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, he was doing quite well in some prime, I think 2008 in the primaries and the, he was winning uh, primaries and they used to put the results and they used to put him in last, uh, number one in last. Uh, I'm not sure if he's controlled opposition, but you shouldn't, I mean, I tried not to uh, let, politicians guide me or be dependent on the state even though i have to deal with the state i try to be as uh, self-reliant as as self-reliant as as self-reliant as i can uh so i don't have to depend on them yeah basically try to be independent be your own central bank just like russia you know, the fact that they have their physical gold at home, that was very good. That was very clever. And it might sound like, well, of course it is. But no, a lot of countries keep their gold with the New York Fed, or they keep their gold with the Bank of England. Uh, you notice Germany some years ago, they, they've moved a lot of their gold out of the New York Fed and Bank of England. So there you go. Uh, that's we got to follow uh, that same kind of uh, strategy. Uh, D big A, big, D big, uh, thoughts on central bankers funding both sides of yet another war. Oh, the bankers, they, they do, <laughs> they do. They've been doing that for time immemorial and they're probably doing it again. Um, yeah, uh, there's a good book, uh, The Tower of Basel by, uh, what's his name, Adam Libor. And it talks about, uh, let's see, Tower of, yeah, they don't care which side wins or loses because they back both horses. So uh, the Rothschilds always did that. So that, yeah, it, it, Adam Libor, and this is all documented. Uh, during World War II, you had a, the guy who ran the BIS uh, was from, an American bank. He was an American, a McKittrick, his name. And you had representatives of uh, the Bank of England, the German Central Bank. So they were doing business with the Germans during World War II. So yeah, I'm, I'm very, sh I'm sure they're, they're dealing behind the scenes, buying Russian assets while we can't. Uh, so it, it's all a, a scam, really. And people keep buying into these things. And I also recommend War is a Racket by Smedley Butler. It's very profitable war because the state gains a lot of power doing wars. And uh, the people close to the state, the big businesses, they, they profit massively because they basically halt the free market and they become monopoly. Yeah, it's a monopoly. And uh, there's a lot of waste. Uh, Smedley Butler talks in uh, War is a Racket, how, how they used to charge, you know, a dollar for something that costs 10 cents. And who pays for it? Well, we do, the taxpayer. Uh, so, yeah. It, it, and I've noticed already that politicians here in the UK are, are talking about, oh, we have to increase our defense budget massively now. You see, that's just more and more basically the state uh, stealing from us, really.
and it's um, unfortunately <laughs> Uh, a, a lot of the people that bought into the crisis of the last two years, uh, the crisis that started with the C, a lot of them are buying into this crisis that starts with a U. Rolf Steiner says, never trust UK or USA. Well, I, I, I don't trust any government. And that's not just the UK and USA. Uh, you could add all the other countries in the world, all the other governments uh, there's an old saying, you know, uh, I, I might hate my government, but I love my country. That's uh, unfortunately the way things are. Billy is res resting. Yeah, there he is. <laughs> uh, BP, uh, Mario, were you working with the tin market collapse in the 80s? No, I wasn't. No, I, I'd never really worked. Uh, you know, I had friends and sometimes colleagues had clients that dealt in the LME. And I have done some trades in the LME. But the bulk of my, uh, the business that I did, the markets I covered were government bonds. So no, and, and I wasn't in the markets in the 80s. I started in the late 80s. Uh, top PVP, do you know the difference between human and person? Yeah, person is more of a, it's a legal, um, it's a legal term. We're not persons, we're humans. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm aware of that. And that's why I like calling someone, someone an individual instead of a person. Person is a legal term. Uh, Harvey. Williams, do you think Russian oligarchs were caught off guard? Probably. I would say so. Yeah. Maybe some not, but uh, a lot of them were. Uh, Tricky Dicky, thank you for your super chat. IMF gave Ukraine billions for immediate spending requirements, buying the weapons we gave them, no doubt. Well, those billions are just going to flow back into the you know, corporate America or corporate UK. And uh, IMF is the foreign arm of the US Treasury. That's all it is. And why is that? Well, because the, U the US Treasury is the only treasury in the, uh, of the whole IMF that has veto power. So whatever uh, the US Treasury wants to do, it can. And if someone else in the IMF wants to do something, the Treasury doesn't, US Treasury doesn't want to, uh, it's no go. Echo Echo, do you anticipate residential property prices will continue to grow? Uh, no, I actually think property prices could slow down quite aggressively in the next 12 to 18 months because people are going to be really hard up. And I think uh, bond yields, interest rates, uh, Maybe not government bond, not maybe not central bank, you know, short term rates, but I think, uh, yeah, mortgage rates are going to go up and people are going to be hard up. People's cost of living, other necessities are going to go up. So I'm not too positive on house prices. Papa Pawn says the love of money is the root of all the evil. I agree. I mean, uh, this channel. We do talk a lot about money, of course, but it's not because we're greedy. It's just because we want to understand how it works so we can protect ourselves. And, and all money is, is a tool to help people uh, indirectly exchange value. That's all it is. Um, of course, the monetary system has been completely corrupted because uh, to have money, you have to have a, an honest money so that people don't screw each other with the exchange of value for value. And unfortunately, that, that hasn't been the case for like 50 years at least. Uh, bingo Wings, do you think the COMEX will default this week? Not really. The COMEX, uh, you know, they, they can just, the, the, 
they'll, they'll say they in their contracts in the small print, it says that they can uh, pay cash. So they won't call it a default, but it could be significant. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of talk about the silver. Uh, JP Morgan apparently uh, uh, shifted a lot of uh, their eligible silver to uh, registered, which means that they become warrants. And so it means that, uh, and there's it seems to be a lot of silver flowing out, the March contract silver. We'll have to see, you know, I, I mean, Comex is a den of vipers, really, <laughs> and they can do anything they want. And, and that's why I think we need to, uh, the more we focus on just uh, stacking physical silver and waking the public up, you know, Comex will be an asterisk, asterisk, asterisk in history, because it's not going to last forever. Ref refine Hayseed Appalachian. Thank you for your super chat. Martin Higgins, do you think interest rates will shoot up after gradual increases? Well, um, central banks, uh, prior to QE, central banks, they, can, they only controlled short-term rates, like the base rate, like overnight uh, bank lending. Uh, and, and then the market uh, really, they try to guide the market, but a lot of people think that central banks actually follow the market. So what we're seeing now is actually uh, bond yields starting to go up a lot. And even though you know the Fed's expected to raise rates on Wednesday by 25 basis points, but rates have gone up a lot already. So central banks might... Uh, might have to follow the markets. And, and by markets, I mean the longer term rates. And yes, they have been able to control longer term rates recently because of QE, because they buy longer term bonds. But now they're stopping QE. Uh, the Fed now stop, you know, they, they stop the tapering. Their balance sheet is supposed to remain flat. Uh, ECB announced last week they're going to speed up their taper. Uh, the Bank of England stopped. So I think we're in for a lot higher higher rates and bond yields as well. David Lankford, uh, you actually think the U.S. Treasury has more authority than BlackRock, Vanguard, or both? Are you utilizing, utilizing their financial power and determining what countries people are allowed to sell and trade? Um, the thing about BlackRock and Va Vanguard is that, <laughs> yes, they have they they manage trillions of dollars, but it's not their money. It's people, investors, small investors, big investors. They put money in these funds. Um, I'm not sure. I guess they control a lot of that. But, uh, I mean, BlackRock has been uh, instrumental in telling the Fed what to do. But uh, I'm not so sure if they have so much power, uh, you know. But um, the thing is, the reason they have that money, it's not just BlackRock, BlackRock's money. It's, let's say, you, you put some, you bought a BlackRock fund or Vanguard fund, so it adds up. It looks like they own everything, but it's actually owned by small, small investors. So I'm not too sure about that. And I'm not saying that the bankers are in, in charge because they are. Scott R., thank you for your super chat. Super chat. Stay free, not safe. Well, that's like Benjamin Franklin sa said, isn't he? Uh, those who prefer to have safety over freedom will have neither. Echo Echo, thank you for your super chat. Says, thank you for your help. You're welcome. <laughs> JP Millward says, Putin is fighting Soros. Uh, Soros is a palindrome. You know that you can spell Soros backwards. Uh, well, actually, Soros, I think he's like, uh, he's not the top guy. Uh, Soros, uh, I made a video about this four or five years ago. Soros was financed and, uh, you know, the people who put up the money for his fund, the quantum fund in the 60s, they were the Wallenbergs from uh, Sweden. 
and and uh, the Wallenbergs are top builder burgers, and uh, I think they own most of Sweden. So yeah, I think Soros is just uh, like a henchman. Biwarikum Stacker, New Zealand, saluting you all from the land of the long white clouds. Uh, watched an interesting video by Stanley Monteith, Brotherhood of Darkness. I have the book, <laughs> Stanley Monteith's, I have the book on my shelf, uh, Brotherhood of Darkness. I recommend the book. Putin destroying the Anglo-Zionist banking cabal. You know, I, I just try to focus on the banking system. Yeah, you know, there's, <laughs> yes, they're Zionists, they're whatever, you know, but it's they're all people, it's the system that's bad. But I agree, maybe he is, who knows? Uh, what do you think of Jim Rogers? Well, uh, Jim Rogers used to work for George Soros. And I, I noticed that his uh, Rogers Commodity Fund is actually... Uh, run by the uh, SC Banken, which is part of the Wallenberg uh, empire. So who knows, maybe, but, uh, you know, he, he's been talking a lot about being in commodities for 20 years, and uh, he's probably going to be proven right. I, I you know, I like, uh, he, he's good. I like his analysis. And uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, he's not right all the time, like he says, and no one is right all the time. Uh, do you follow Martin Armstrong? I, I used to follow him a lot when he used to write from prison uh, back in like 05 to 07. I preferred the stuff that came out when he was in, in jail. Not that I think that's a nice thing because apparently he was held without charges. But recently I haven't followed him that much. What's going on in the Italian bond markets? Uh, Ricardo Calò. Uh, yeah, this week, in the past week, yields went up a lot, like about 20 basis points after the ECB came out and said that they're going to accelerate their tapering. So, yes, Italian bank, uh, you know, the BTP, I used to trade BTP uh, bonds, uh, BTP bond futures. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, I think we're around 1.9% the 10 year. And what, what this means is that the ECB is going to be buying less Italian bonds. And uh, I think yields are going to go higher because the Italian economy isn't doing well. Italy has a lot of debt. We've got inflation. So not good. But it's not just Italy, Portugal, Spain, uh, Greece. What you need to follow with the BTP uh, the Italian government bond yield is the spread between that and the German. If that starts, you know, if, if the Italian bond yields start going up a lot more than the German, that's a bad thing. They call it the spread. Uh, Italian banks own too much Russian debt. Yeah, I think there's Unicredit has like 9 billion in, in Russia. So yeah, that could be a, a, some trouble. Echo Echo says Rogers anticipates one more stock market rally after war is over than a huge crash. Who knows? Who knows when the, this war might be over? Uh, Alex Skuru, your thoughts in the nickel market closing in china had six billion short in play it would have destroyed that exchange yeah i spoke about that i did an lme video last week because uh, lme is the exchange that where nickel is traded and uh i think it was much more about the the brokers in the lme and the dealers than the chinese company 
And uh, why is that? Well, because the LME brokers, you know, the LME is not a normal futures market where uh, the brokers match buyers and sellers. Uh, you have uh, brokers in the LME, they make markets. So they got caught really badly. And uh, LME brokers, they, let's say a firm, XYZ firm uh, was trading uh, nickel and they lost their shirt, but they also trade all other uh, metals. And uh, it could have brought down the whole exchange. I think the Chinese company would have lost a lot of money, but uh, they produce nickel as well. And uh, I think it was more a problem for, for the LME. It could have destroyed the LME, but I think a lot of people think that a base metals uh, trading is gonna migrate to China, Shanghai, places like that. I think the LME is over. To be honest, the fact that they cancel trades uh, it, it's just uh, it's another uh, it's another attack on property rights on the rule of law because the reason uh, yeah you have a functioning market is that you have rule of law you it's like a Mickey Mouse really what Mickey Mouse market when you cancel trades it's the kind of stuff they be maybe do in. Uh, you know, what they call used to call, you know, banana republics to cancel uh, a trade in an exchange. That exchange is not going to last long. We got 10 minutes left. And could that happen to gold and silver? Who knows? Um, if you've noticed uh, commodities over the last year and a half, maybe a little longer, uh, yeah, about a year and a half. We've seen, you know, we saw lumber like do a, a moonshot. We saw nickel. We're seeing oil. So it's all about the money. It's the dollar that's, uh, it's the fiat currency system that is in trouble. Eventually, I think the last two metals that are going to go wild are going to be the monetary metals, gold and silver. And that's why we need to be patient. <laughs> At least it gives us time to uh, acquire them. Mr. Ashford, I heard some of the big players got bailed out by JP Morgan. Yeah, I think uh, I'm not sure if JP Morgan uh, has dealers or brokers in the LME. Uh, they might have been bailed out by canceling trades. Who knows? Harvey Williams, have you seen the two and 10 year bond yields are close to? Oh, hold on. Yeah, it's been flattening a lot. I think that it's a, around uh, 30, 25 to 30 basis points. That's a bad sign for the economy. If, if it goes inverted, it, it, it's, a, it's a signal of a recession. That happened in 2019. And a lot of people said, oh, it doesn't work anymore. You know, that twos, tens inversion doesn't mean anything. Well, and then we had a recession in 2020. Um, so, yeah, we have to keep an eye on the twos, tens. Any thoughts about Peter Schiff? Uh, I've had him on my channel a couple of times. I've been following him for years. Um, yeah, I mean, his overall view of things, I agree with. But some of the details, I'm not too, I, I'm not in 100% agreement. That's, but his general idea of uh, small government, free market, sound money, are pretty good. Uh, one thing I don't like about him, he never talks about ending the Fed. You know, I, I would have thought he'd want to end the central bank, and he doesn't. That's uh, the only gripe I have. Scott, 49140, would it be possible for everyone to have gold as a standard if there was, if there is only a limited amount? While well, some people do do talk about that, they say there's not enough gold, um, but gold is the most abundant commodity. I know it's difficult to find and it's rare, but we've got about over 80 years of stock to flow ratio. And why that means there's 80 years of gold production <laughs> above ground. And that's the reason it's money because it's not consumed. And that, uh, JP Morgan said in 1912, and I don't think it's changed because a lot more gold has been produced since then. He said gold is money. And that's why it's money, because it's not consumed. 
uh, the stock to flow ratio is just about right. And uh, the growth supply, you know, growth of the supply of gold usually tends to match population growth and productivity. And that's why it's money. And uh, it's always, uh, yeah, people always say, oh, there's not enough gold, but there is. And it just depends on the price on the exchange rate be between gold and other things. It, it, the problem is when you have governments trying to control, uh, you know, when they issue a fiat currency and try to control it. Ideally, what you want is like government out of money. And then you'd have, you know, a gram of gold or you could call it, you know, uh, a tenth of a dollar or whatever. And you would exchange that, you know, the exchange rate of that to commodities and service services would fluctuate, but it would always be a gram. It, how much, you know, wheat you get from that would change. And, and that's why gold and silver are at the center in their money. Um, Rolfstein Venezuela will sell oil for gold to USA. Yeah, you know, it looks like... Uh, I, I wanted to talk about Venezuela, actually, because it's to do with uh, property rights, because, uh, you know, Venezuela has been uh, on the uh, Anglo-Americans uh, bad book for the last 10, 15 years. Venezuela has some gold with the Bank of England. They froze their gold here. And now they're going back to Venezuela and saying, oh, please sell us your oil. If I was... Uh, the president of Venezuela, Maduro, uh, I would say, no, thank you. We're going to sell it to someone else. And uh, yeah, or he could say, yeah, we will sell it to you, but you have to give us uh, twice the gold we have at the Bank of England, please, uh, and charge them double for the oil. <laughs> it just goes to show that it's not about democracy. It's not about uh, principles. It it's all about the money. Michael White says, have a great holiday, Mario. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Benoit Guillou says, anything divisible is scalable. That's right. And today with, uh, you know, with uh, technology, uh, you could, like with Glint, you can buy a, a cent uh, or a penny of gold. So there you go. Uh, Mario Bingo Wings had a good question. Where is Bingo Wings? Let's see his question. Uh, will the price of land property go up with the metals? Um, the thing of, uh, you know, if we do have a currency collapse, hyperinflation, uh, it's difficult, you know, people won't have the cash or the money to buy land or property. Um, if we have like a controlled inflation, they could go up. Real estate, though, I think is over overdone. But over the long term, I mean, very wealthy families, generational wealth, they all have a lot of land and real estate. I think that's the way you have to think about it. So hopefully that helps. Scoobyism three. Enjoy your family, marry best of times. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mara M. Could could government confiscate gold with glint? Uh, well, the the gold with with glint is in Switzerland. So, I don't. I mean, the the Swiss they they, they I think they've frozen some of the. Uh, a Russian oligarchs account, but uh, I don't think uh, you know anything is possible. But they could confiscate yours if you open an account with a bank in Switzerland and put Swiss francs there. They could confiscate that. So, yeah, I, I mean, um, I have a Glint card and I use some use it. I prefer having the physical, but it's uh, it's how can I say convenient and some people might like it. And uh, yeah. There you go. Mara M. Could, yeah, I've seen that one.
BP, uh, given what happened in the LME, wouldn't this build a case uh, to not invest in gold and silver mining stocks because most miners hedged their short metal? Uh, that uh, Rafi Faber did a video about that, and he checked like the major miners like Newmont and Barrick. They don't they don't have any hedges. So and I guess junior exploration companies they're not even producing gold, so they're not really hedging. You'd need to check. You need to be careful, of course. I agree, but it's not going to be all of them. David Bradley, safe travels. Thank you. Thanks. All right, I'll take uh, I'll take one or two more questions. We're almost finished here. Let's see. Uh, Switzerland, uh, beautiful. It is expensive, Switzerland. I'm lucky because I don't have to pay uh, for my accommodation. So there you go. End the Fed. All right, we're gonna we're gonna end here with end the Fed. Yes, let's end the Fed. Thank you, everyone, and uh, have a great uh, rest of the weekend and have a great week next week. And I will be doing my videos from Switzerland. And uh, tomorrow. I've prepared a video for tomorrow. I prepared it today, but it's coming out tomorrow morning, uh, I think around 10 o'clock London. So while I'm traveling, the video will come out. So thank you again and take care. Bye.